Hello everybody, I'm Robert Zone, Value Electronics, and I want to wish everybody a very happy, healthy, and prosperous new year, and for the many, many years ahead. Uh, today on uh, Shane's channel, Bear Change, we're going to talk about three new ultra short throw projectors from Hisense. As you might remember, Hisense is the winner of Value Electronics Ultra Short Throw Shootout Evaluation Event this past October, and uh, we discussed uh, with all the engineers at Hisense uh, all the benefits and values and reasons why they came out as the king of ultra short throw, and the one or two little things that we wanted them to enhance and improve upon. And uh, this new Hisense that we're about to show you right now, the new PX1 Pro, is the answer to all of that. What we've done is we've lowered the blacks so we have better shadow detail, deeper, richer blacks, more gradation in the low luminance area, much better HDR uh, response and uh, cinema display of HDR. We have full color volume. Uh, we've uh, got 2200 peak lumens with a much lower black floor uh, than what we've seen before on projection systems. Uh, this is HDR10 capable. Uh, it is, um, you can have a 90 inch screen, 100 inch screen, 110, 120, or up to 130 inch screen of your choice uh, paired with this. If you have a very dark room, you can just use your white walls. If you have ambient light in the room, you should buy an ultra short throw screen of your size choice to go with it. And um, this is the triple laser, dedicated red laser, a dedicated blue and a dedicated green laser. So you're getting your premium color fidelity and color accuracy, color saturation and color volume. So you'll see colors on a projection system like you have never seen before. In addition to Hisense's new PX1 Pro, we also now have a successor to the L5H, the L5G model. The L5G model is a single laser with the RGB spinning wheel to generate all the colors, but has the new brighter 3000 lumens max and has the new uh, digital processing chips. So this is a very nice upgrade starting at with a 100 inch screen starting at $39.99 with the screen included and you can bid, pair it up with a 120 inch screen for $44.99. Another excellent value and high performance ultra short throw projection system. So we have them all listed on our website valueelectronics.com and look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. All right, thanks for the intro, Robert. So this is it right here. Let's get this thing unboxed. But inside the box, we have a little wrench. We've got some white gloves, cleaning cloth, a little blower for the lens, and a brush for the lens to get the dust away. Here's the power cord. Here's the remote control, AV adapter, some feet, and the instructions. It's not too light, not too heavy. It's uh, fairly small as well, but dimension wise, it is about 20, 20 and a half inches wide by 13 inches deep. And it stands about five and a half inches tall. So on the front here, we've got the little sensors. So if you were to walk in front of it, it would automatically shut off the lens. That's the lens itself right there. Over here in the bottom corner, that's the power button. We've got some call out badges here. Looks like Android TV's built in, it does support Dolby Atmos. This does have a native resolution of 4K. I believe it's using the 0.47 chip and it is HDR compatible as well. On the front, you will find the speakers, like I mentioned before, it does have some 30 watt speakers in here with Dolby Atmos support. On each side, there are some exhaust vents and intakes on each side. And around back, we've got connections for an antenna, your optical, two HDMIs, USB 3.0, 3.5 mil audio input, serial, service port, LAN connection, and your power input. On the bottom, we have some adjustable feet. So if you wanna get this perfectly leveled, you can adjust the feet via right there. 
And if you look at these mounting points here, you can also mount these on your ceiling as well. So that's pretty cool if you don't want to put it down on a shelf or something like that. It's got a nice color. So kudos to Hisense for making this like a dark gray. So it's not white like the Samsung and the LGs. So this should disappear in the middle of the night if you're watching a movie in the dark. So that's pretty cool. This does support 107% of BT 2020. This does have a native resolution of 4K, which does use the TI upscaling chip, but you do get 8.3 million pixels on screen. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Once you get the projector all set up, you're gonna be taken to the home screen. Here you can see it does run on Android TV. And as far as the navigation is concerned, this is a very snappy and quick little projector. Let's go all the way up top here and just check out some of the projector's settings. First option we've got is picture settings. Under laser luminance, here you can change the slider. And you can change it from zero, which dims down the laser, all the way up to maximum output level at 10. The automatic light sensor will automatically dim the laser output, but if you want maximum output, I would just keep that at 10. Under picture modes, we've got a few presets, which we will check out a little bit later on once we're playing some actual content. And here we've got some sliders for contrast, brightness, color, tint, and sharpness. You can apply all these settings to all sources or just the current source. Under smart scene, you can turn that on or off. That'll adjust your picture settings depending on what kind of content you're watching automatically. I would probably keep this off if I was you. Under advanced settings, we've got color temperature, low, mid-low, medium, and high. Motion enhancement, we've got off. Custom, which you can adjust jutter and blur reduction. Film, clear, standard, and smooth. Noise reduction, we've got off, low, medium, and high. Digital noise reduction, same thing, off, low, medium, and high. HDMI dynamic range, this is grayed out right now because we're not playing an HDMI source. Under active contrast, we've got off, low, medium, and high. Spec wise, this is rated at a million to one contrast ratio so which is probably going to be the setting you'd use for high and this does have a filmmaker mode auto detection which will shut off all the picture processing modes under color space we've got native auto bt709 p3 and 2020 and this does have instant game response if you were to have a console hooked up to this so this does have two HDMI 2.1 inputs with support for a LLM. I don't know what the measured input lag is, but this does have a LLM for all you video gamers out there. Under calibration settings, we've got the color tuner where you can adjust your colors, your red, green, blue, yellow, cyan, magenta, flesh tone. We've got the white balance at two point or 20 points. Here you can adjust the level red, green, and blue outputs, or you can reset this. I wouldn't mess with that if you don't have any kind of measurement tools. Under gamma, we've got 2.0, 2.2, 2.4, BT 1886, HLG, and 2084. Gamma, gamma calibration, we've got from 5% up to 100%. And we've got some RGB settings here. And right on the bottom, you can reset everything that you've just changed. Under screen settings, we've got projection mode. We've got front, front ceiling, rear, and rear ceiling. So you can mount this on your ceiling if you wanted to. Under screen type, we've got wide angle ALR screen or we've got high gain ALR. For this particular screen that I'm using, I had to keep it on high gain ALR. And the screen that I'm using is a daylight screen. It's, uh, it's got a negative gain because it is gray. It's got a 0.9 gain. So this will enhance black levels a bit since DLPs tend to not have the greatest blacks. So the screen will enhance the black levels. And here we've got auto geometric correction. So if the projector is on an unlevel surface, this will automatically adjust keystoning. But for my setup, I have the screen set up just perfectly so I did not have to use auto geometric correction. If you wanted to adjust manually, we've got a few different points here. I can take the upper left corner in you can see that it's slowly moving inwards, so it's very granular in that respect, so that is pretty nice. I can pull it downwards as well. It's very slow, so 
It's going to take a little bit of time, but you can see how the upper left corner is kind of skewing a bit. So once you get all that done, if you are having issues with getting your projector lined up with your screen, um, I would recommend not using this. Try to get this as close as possible so you're getting your maximum full resolution. But if you can't for whatever reason, this is where you would come to adjust it. And then on the bottom here, you can also reset that as well. And it goes back to normal. Now, the big thing here coming from the L9, which was at the projector shootout, was the focus adjustment. This projector does support focus adjusting, so you can go anywhere from 90 inches to 130 inch screen, and you can adjust the focus manually. So anywhere in between that, you can fit this projector in. Whereas on the L9, you were kind of stuck at a fixed focal length. So you were either at the 100 inch, or I think it was like the 120 inch. So you were either at those two fixed screen points. This is much more flexible now that it has focusing adjustment built into it. And for eye protection, if you put this on and you step in front of the laser, it'll give you a little warning sign and it'll shut down to keep your eyes from getting all burnt out from the laser. So if you've got some little kids, you might want to keep that on. Here we've got some sound settings. We've got system sound. You can keep that on or off if you want to hear the little click sounds. We've got your sound modes. We've got standard theater, sports, music, speech, and late night. We'll check that out a little bit later once we're playing some content. Audio output, we've got the built-in speakers, ARC, Bluetooth, or WISA speaker. This is a WISA certified projector, so if you were using something like an Enclave WISA certified home theater, you can connect that up to the projector without any wires, except for the wires to plug in the speakers to the walls. But wireless in the respect that you don't have to run everything to like an AVR or processor out to several speakers or an amplifier. So that can be pretty handy that this projector is WISA certified. And here we've got some settings for that. eARC, if you've got this hooked up to an AVR or processor, TV speaker, or the projector speaker, you can turn that on or off. This does support Dolby Atmos, quote unquote Dolby Atmos, which basically just expands the sound out. You're not gonna get any kind of overhead effects or anything coming from behind you. So it's just kind of like an expansive sound if, by turning this on. We'll check that out as well a little bit later. And under advanced settings, we've got your balance controls, volume level, auto volume control. Under digital out, we've got auto, pass through PCM, Dolby Audio, Dolby Audio, Dolby Digital Plus. We've got auto delay, lip sync, under EQ, we've got a few bands here. We've got 120, 500, 1.55K, 10K, and you can reset all your settings there. Under preferred audio language, we've got English, Espanol, and Francais. And we've got headphone mode only and headphone volume control if you've got some headphones plugged up to the projector. And the last setting here is reset. Seeing as this is Android TV and it does have built-in apps, let's check out a few apps and see which ones support 4K HDR. First app being YouTube. If we go ahead and tap up and under more, you can see that this does indeed support 4K at 60 frames per second and HDR. And it does work very nice. The colors are very nice, punchy and vibrant. Backing out of this, let's hop into Amazon Prime Video. So from the looks of it, it does say HDR. Let's go ahead and hit resume. And if we tap on the picture settings here, you can see that it does indeed support HDR. Let's jump out of that, hop into Disney Plus. So under here, the inbuilt app does support IMAX enhanced 4K Ultra HD, HDR10 and 5.1. Tapping on the menu button under picture settings here. You can see it does support HDR again So Disney Plus does support 4k and HDR Let's jump out of this and check out one more We'll check out voodoo and see if this does support 4k as well And you can see here it does support ultra HD and Atmos and HDR and as you can see, it supports HDR10, Atmos, and it's UHD as well, right on the bottom here. You can change the setting at either UHD, HDX, or SD. And that is one sharp, bright, and pretty crispy picture. 
Now at the time of this video, the PX1 is not a Netflix certified projector, so the Netflix app is not available in the Google App Store. If you want to Netflix and chill, you'll have to use an external streaming device. Next up, we're going to check out the Spears and Munsell 4K HDR test disc under dynamic range high. If we jump into this test pattern here, we can see that from 722 down to 675, you can see that the boxes kind of stop at around 708. And also the shadow detail up in the center of the screen here is kind of clipped in the middle, so there's not much going on there. If we go ahead and hop into the picture settings, we can adjust the contrast levels here. And unfortunately with these Android TV projectors, there's no way just to bring up the contrast slider. So you have to bring up the entire right side of the screen, which kind of, which kind of keeps everything in the way of just seeing the entire screen. So that's kind of a, a bummer having that feature. But if we take the contrast slider and slide it all the way down, all the way down to zero, you can start seeing some highlight detail and the boxes kind of start clipping at about the 716 box. Now in my testing, if I bring this all the way up to about 18, I can still get some good detail at like 7, 716 while still retaining good highlight detail in the center of the screen. Anything above that, then I start blowing everything out. So for this particular pattern here, I do find that 18 works the best. That of course is kind of gonna limit the overall contrast levels, but if you do want to get the most detail on the upper end, then uh, for me, at least on this screen, it might be different for different screens, but, but for my screen, 18 seems to be working the best. Next up, we're gonna check out dynamic range low. Now you should see some boxes on the upper portion of the screen, also in the center of the screen. If we go on ahead and adjust the brightness levels, let's just drop it all the way down, which basically turns the entire screen black. And at least the good thing with this projector is that with the Hisense L9, running a test like this would end up with a black screen. So I'm happy to see that with this projector, we're actually seeing some different gradational tones here in the blacks. And in my testing, you know, if you bring it all the way up, obviously everything's all gray, but I do find at about 58, that the boxes start disappearing right around this section here. So for my screen, 58 seems to work the best as far as brightness is concerned. Now this is no JVC, this is not an OLED. These blacks definitely look gray. These are not pure blacks. This is 100% gray. But the Hisense in comparison to other projectors using the 0.47 chip, such as an Optoma or a BenQ or the XJimmy, this is right on par with those ultra short throws as well. Now for demo material, we're gonna play this clip at 10,000 nits BT 2020 and see how good the HDR tone mapping works. All right, now this is a tough scene. This is basically almost an all white screen with a couple of horses in it. If you look at the snow, you should be able to see some grass and the texture in the snow, little hoof prints and all that. There are some trees in the background as well. I believe there's a mountain back there also and it's, uh, you know, it's not bad looking for this projector at this price point, but on a more capable television set, there's definitely more shades and gradational tones in the snow and also in the backdrop. If we go ahead, tap on the menu button, go into the picture settings, we can see what the HDR modes will look like. So first up, let's check out HDR Vivid. So if you want the absolute brightest picture, I would select HDR Vivid, especially if you're watching this with some lights on. This is probably your best bet. We already saw HDR Standard, which basically a little bit warmer than HDR Vivid. HDR Energy Savings, you can see how the laser dims down. The whites are a little bit more cleaner looking than the HDR Standard. Under HDR Game, everything brightens up, but also the whites are a bit more clipped. Under HDR Sport, I'm going to say the contrast is a little bit better, especially the detail in the snow there, and it's also a little bit whiter from the previous preset. Under HDR Theater, everything is a lot warmer looking, and also the detail in the snow and in the background, a bit harder to see as well. Less textures in the snow, 
the grass is a little bit tougher to see and it's a bit tougher to make out the trees in the back as well. Under filmmaker mode, I'm gonna say this is a little bit better than HDR theater. So the trees are a little bit better in the back, a little bit more tones in the snow on the lower left corner here and the grass seems to be a little bit cleaner as well. But for me personally, I did find that HDR standard kind of looks the best. Nice balance of uh, nice warmth to the picture. Also nice contrast in the snow and detail in the background as well. Of course, again, depending on your screen and if you have this professionally calibrated with calibration tools, you might find that you prefer a different setting altogether. But with just adjusting contrast and brightness and a couple of the the advanced settings like uh, color temperature and motion enhancement, noise reduction, just some basic settings. This is about as good as this particular scene can get. Now this particular scene here, I've got it under HDR standard again. There's some good, good shadow detail over there in the left hand side of the screen where the trees are and where the uh, sunrise is behind the clouds there. Nice tones, nice variation of tones in oranges and reds and white. And this is under HDR standard. If we go on over under picture mode and just check out HDR Vivid once again, you can see that the tones right behind the clouds there in the sun, they're a lot hotter looking. They're not quite as warm looking. And over in the trees there, you know, it brings out some more pop in the trees as well. But just the overall, as far as like highlights is concerned, I do find if you were gonna bump this up to HDR Vivid, that you're gonna lose some detail in the uh, specular highlight area. So for me, I would prefer HDR standard, standard or if you wanted to keep it at like filmmaker mode to be more of a purist, I guess. That would work pretty good as well. As for lens quality, there is a bit of chromatic aberration, so it isn't perfect. It's not something you notice while watching content, so it's not going to ruin your viewing experience. And honestly, I've reviewed almost a dozen of these ultra short throw projectors, and they've all had less than perfect lenses. As for image quality, it's a razor sharp looking projector. The colors look amazing, and the image does have impressive brightness with the lights off. Shadow detail and black levels, as far as I can remember, don't crush details and don't look all muddy like the Hisense L9 did when I saw it at the projector shootout. And that was a huge miss for that projector. So the P1X is already a step ahead in that area, so I'm glad they worked that out. Keep in mind that this is still a DLP projector, so the blacks do lean more on the grayer side. But in comparison to the others that I've had in for review, it's right there with the Samsungs and the LGs. If you're a 3D fan, the projector is not 3D capable. Though, if you do plan on gaming, I thought it was perfectly fine while using the Xbox. Now, if you are sensitive to the rainbow effect, I did notice it on occasion while gaming, but for movie watching, I rarely saw it. So if you are looking for it, you'll probably see it. Otherwise, it wasn't a big deal. The fan noise with the laser on full brightness can be noticeable when the volume is low or if there's a quiet part in a movie. Otherwise, it's not really an issue and it's not distracting. I think I get. What was it? Poker night? Bachelor party? I'm not sure. It happens. I'll get you sorted out, sir. Let me take those for you. What day is it? Thank you everybody for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this video and learning more about this new technology. This is a projector that appeals to a very wide audience because of its price and picture quality performance. So if you want to have an immersive experience anywhere from 90 inch to up to 130 inch in your home in a small package with a really good built-in audio system, this is your projector, this is your time. We're in stock, we're shipping them now, $34.99 delivered nationwide, and you will be very impressed for the many years ahead using this beautiful projection system. Thank you all for tuning in, and I look forward to meeting you in person and working with you.